before we get into the Word. And I want to remind you that Sunday night after the PM service, the youth, young adults rather, will be having a uh, fundraiser spaghetti dinner. Uh, so uh, everybody likes to get spaghetti, and uh, especially the one my wife cooked that I had for supper tonight. That was good. Amen. I, I want to have a shouting spirit right here. <laughs> so she's saying, on. Ladies Fellowship, uh, Tuesday the 19th of January, uh, we're going to have a get-together at the House of Pizza. So if uh, you're able to go to that, I, I encourage you to go out and be together there uh, for that. The Senior Adult Ministry event will be held Saturday the 23rd. Is that here? 6.30 here at the church. All right. So uh, don't forget about that if you're part of the Senior Adult Ministry. Coming up, our 10th year anniversary celebration, and uh, we're going to be uh, having a, a good time of worship and then uh, be having a, a meal here together uh, after, after the morning service, and there's a food sign-up list on the welcome desk. We always do this covered dish style. It's always more than enough food for everybody, but we encourage you to sign up to uh, uh, so that kind of know what you're bringing and uh, let us know that, and that sign-up sheet is on the welcome desk, so if you can take care of that. And then uh, we're looking, also looking for some folks that want to help pack food at Christian Ministries. Now, this is uh, morning hours, but anybody that would be able to do it between 9 and 1, they need about three to four people per day to do this, and there's a sign-up sheet out there on the welcome desk, and this is uh, Monday through Wednesday, the 22nd through the 24th. Now, uh, this is this is strictly our church on these particular days, so if you can help with this, it would be very much appreciated uh, to be able to uh, pack the food for those, that, the boxes and things that they do when they hand out those things during this time of year. So please, if you can help with that, we'd sure appreciate it. And there's the nursery ministry. I'm assuming that's all. All right, we're good. So let's uh, go to Lord in prayer. We've got quite a few things that we need to be praying about. Um, Seems you're getting in that time of year where people are starting to fight the sickness and all that other stuff, and so we want to pray for one another. But Miss Helen is not with us tonight because she's leaving out early in the morning uh, to take uh, someone in her family. I can't remember who it was, but someone in her family's got a, uh, an appointment that they got to be in Statesville, so she's leaving out early in the morning. She was going to get some rest tonight. Uh, Terry went through her uh, chemo and radiation today, her m main chemo today, and is uh, uh, doing pretty well. I talked to Ray a little while ago. So remember him, uh, remember her, if you will, that God will continue to touch her and strengthen her. Remember Logan, uh, Sean, this is your friend? Uh, Sean's got a friend uh, who overdosed, and uh, just a young man, and uh, they've already put him in hospice care. So remember little Logan and his family, that God would touch him and minister to him. Sister Sue's sick tonight, so remember her, if you will. Jessica Hudson, uh, who needs deliverance. Pray for Fanny and her mom, they're both sick. Uh, Nancy Guy's mom has surgery coming up on the 2nd of February, so please remember uh, uh, her, if you will. Uh, also, Ken Cantrell, Brother Mike's brother, uh, is very congested, dealing with some health issues. So remember him. My sister Carmen has been battling a urinary tract infection. So remember her, if you will, uh, that God will touch her and minister her. Remember Robin, who's 48 years old, had a heart attack. She's at Winston. So remember them. Uh, also remember Julian. Continue to pray for Julian. Julian's on his way to recovery, but he's still having some effects from that concussion. So remember him, if you will, that God will touch him and minister him. Also, Gloria Ward, uh, who is uh, dealing with stage 4 cancer. Remember Jack and Donna Lynn, who's also dealing with some health issues. And remember uh, Ronnie Robinson, who's dealing with some blockages. Also want to ask you to pray for uh, Ann uh, Olszewicz. Is that, did I say that right? Olszewski. I probably said that wrong. But Frank passed away. Uh, Frank passed away last Friday. They buried him yesterday. So remember Ann. Uh, she's having to deal with this. And also remember Suzette Grooms. Uh, Suzette uh, has been moved to the hospice house. I talked with uh, Pastor Mike Devine on the way to church tonight. And uh, she is breathing on her own, which they're kind of amazed at. Uh, and so she's kind of holding her own right now. But uh, uh, from what their reports are, it's not promising. But, you know, God has the final say-so and all that. So remember Suzette uh, and Nathan, uh, they're, they're staying with her at the, uh, uh, at the uh, uh, hospice house. And she's in Huntersville. And so remember Nathan and, and, and Aaron and Amber and Andrew. I'll make sure I say all the names right. But uh, remember them and the kids that God was just touching and ministering. Mike said they're just praying with her, worshiping with her, and just having themselves a good time in the Lord there in the room and uh, uh, just just seeing what God's going to do. And so if you would remember the groom's family that God was touching and ministering. Amen. Did I forget anything? We're good. Can somebody close that door for me right there? Because they're starting to shout over there. <laughs> just it'll give me a little barrier. I appreciate it. Uh, I already closed the other ones, I think, Brother Major, going into the fellowship hall. You might want to check, make sure nobody's opening them. But, but 
they, 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 were, they were on their face before the Lord at 6.30. They were seeking God's face. And I thank God for that. But uh, uh, we want to pray God bless them, that God touch them and minister to them. Not only tonight, but uh, they're, they're in transition in ministry and buildings and all the stuff that's going on. And so uh, we just thank God they're, they're being a blessing to us right now and uh, uh, taking care of their area and all the stuff they got over there. And they're giving us a little bit of money to help us with our expenses for use of the building. Uh, but we want to pray for them also that God would uh, uh, just open the door for them and strengthen them, help them as they go through their uh, process of uh, uh, transition, that God would just help them in that. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, okay, all right, all right, okay, we'll talk about it after service. <laughs> so uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to have his way. If you would, uh, stand for a moment. If you join with someone close to you, we're going to pray and ask God to have his way. Roger said he just got sat down. I'm already getting you to stand up. Should, should, should have come on in there, Amen. But it is good to see you all. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that you've given us to come into your house, God, the opportunity to come and dig in your word and to learn of you and to study more about you, God, and see what it is you have to say to us. Tonight, God, we're going to dig a little bit further in the second chapter of Hebrews and see, Lord, what it is that you're saying to us about this great salvation that you've granted unto us, God. We thank you for uh, the blessing uh, of of salvation, the blessing of what you've done, Lord, in our lives and uh, setting us free and liberating us, God, to to, to have that grace uh, in our lives, God, not of anything that we did, but grace. And we thank you for that, Jesus. We, we just pray tonight that you would move and minister in every heart and every life of each and every person, God, for every need that's been mentioned. We pray, God, for healing tonight, restoration, God, that you would do a mighty work in their lives, Jesus, that you would touch them by your mighty power. God, that you would bring healing and, and, and restoration and deliverance. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, it, it is by you, through you, for you, God, and for your glory. And pray, God, that your will be done tonight. We pray, God, for the Grooves family. I do pray for Suzette and for Nathan and the family, God, that you would minister to them and strengthen them as they're dealing with this. I pray for Ann tonight, God, as she's having to move forward with, with, with Frank uh, having passed on. I know that he suffered so much, God, with this cancer. But, God, I just praise you uh, for, for your glory and your grace and your mercy, God, that you did demonstrated even through that time, God. We just pray that you would continue to minister to Ann and strengthen her, encourage her, I pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we, we lift up Sue tonight, God, that you would heal her body and touch her. Be with Miss Helen, God, as she travels in the morning, God, that you would touch her and minister to her. Father, for this pastor that is uh, in transition and resigning and, and moving back home, God, I pray that you would move in this situation and speak peace and strength, God, in, in every situation, God, that your will be done in these. Father, we pray for Julian, God, that you would help him continue to recover from this uh, uh, head injury that he's dealt with, this concussion, Lord. I pray that you would minister to him and strengthen him in the name of Jesus, Father. We're believing you for that tonight. Father, I pray for Carmen, that you would heal her body and do a work in her. And Father, we just surrender all these other needs to you, Lord. We know that you're able to do it. We just depend on you and lean on you, God. As we pray tonight in agreement, Father, we pray that uh, you would fulfill your word in, in our lives, God, and fulfill that word that we're two or three agree is touching any one thing. What we ask it shall be done. And we, Father, as we bind together tonight, we stand on that word, that promise of your word, God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that your will be done. And we surrender it all to you. We love you. We praise you. We give you the glory and the honor for it. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said. Amen. You may be seated. Good to see you again in the Lord's house. Trace, if you'll get that ready. Don't normally do this on Wednesday night, but I, I, I want to share a little song with you that kind of goes along with uh, the messages. I uh, hope it blesses you. Turn up a little bit more in one. I'll tell you one. It happened so long ago I cried out for mercy back then I pled the blood of Jesus And begged Him to forgive my sin But I still can't forget it It just won't go away So I wept again Lord, wash my sin This is all He'd say 
Watch sin. Watch sin. That's as far away as the east is from the west. Watch sin. Watch sin. It was gone the very minute you confessed. Buried in the sea of forgiveness. Are you thankful for that tonight? The heaviest thing you'll carry is a load of guilt and shame. You were never meant to bear them, so let them go in Jesus' name. Our God is slow to anger, quick to forgive our sin. Let Him put them under the blood. Don't bring them up again, because He'll just say, Watch sin. Watch sin. Well, that's as far away as the east is from the west. Watch sin. Watch sin. It was gone the very minute you confessed. Buried in the sea. Of forgetfulness. Ooh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, please deliver me from my accusing memory. Nothing makes me weak this way. And when I hear you say, Watch sin, watch sin, that's as far away as the east is from the west. Watch sin, watch sin, it was gone. The very minute you confessed, buried in the sea of forgetfulness. Ooh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bibles. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. We're going to look at the first four verses. Lord willing, we'll do our best to get through them tonight. But uh, we'll see what God has to say with, for us. If, if you don't mind standing for the reading of God's Word, we're going to look at the first four verses. I want to talk to you about a great salvation. A great salvation that's been given unto us. Hebrews chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Now, notice that's a question. The question really boils down to is this, this word that was given, the, the commandments that was given, that there is a, 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 a just reward that comes for disobedience to this. But the question comes in is how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? If God confirmed this great salvation, and we reject it, how in the world would we ever escape? So I want to talk to you tonight about this great salvation, this salvation we dare not neglect. Father, bless your word, bless the time of your word, open the ears of the hearers, and help us just to dig a little bit deeper, God, tonight, to see what it is you have to say to us. 
And, Father, we surrender this time to you. Bless the hearers and bless me tonight. God, help me to do what I need to do for your kingdom's sake and for your glory. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. As you're being seated, turn to a neighbor and say, I'm glad I'm saved tonight. If they couldn't say it tonight, you just let me know, and we'll have an altar call here in a little bit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, so if you've not been here so far, we, we, uh, we've covered the first chapter of Hebrews, and going through that first chapter, we've seen this, this escalation, if you will, of thought that the writer is, 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 is doing here. He's going from this lesser argument to this greater argument. And last week, we kind of muddled our way through, if you will, through some understanding about the angels and about how Jesus is above the angels and how that what he brought and what he desired or what he brought forth is much greater than anything that had ever been given. And so we see here even the writer is continuing, if you will, the the uh, supremacy of Jesus Christ even above the angels. And he's talking about the message. And again, we, we, to understand what's being said here and what's being spoken here, you have to understand again that they're looking at this thing from the point of view of their argument that Moses did not receive the commandments directly from God, but that it was delivered to him by the angels. And again, I, I don't want it, there to be any confusion there. I, I believe what I read as far as what the Bible says about the fact that God inscribed the commandments in the rock and hewn them out himself. But their belief at that particular time was the interaction of the angels between the men, between God and men. So so as, as we begin to see that, we need to see the understanding of what's going on here. So basically, the writer here is talking about two different revelations. In his mind, he's dealing with two different revelations. Number one was the revelation of the law which came by the medium of the angels. Again, that's, that, that was their, their belief at that time. And so that's to say the Ten Commandments. Now, now any breach of that particular law followed by, was followed by strict and, and, and just punishment. If you, if you broke that commandment, you were stoned to death or you were isolated or you were kicked out of the camp. If, if you broke one of those laws, it was very swift, it was very strict, and it was very just punishment. And so this, this is what the writer is saying here. The, the, the other revelation was that which came through the medium of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Son. And because it came in and through the Son, it was infinitely greater than the revelation of God's truth brought by the angels. It was much greater than what they had to bring. And so therefore, any transgression of it had to be followed by a far more, a far more terrible punishment. If you neglected this salvation, if you neglected this message of Christ or the message of the gospel, and so there, there was a far greater uh, and more terrible punishment that took place. So if people cannot ignore the revelation which came through the angels, how much less can they ignore the revelation which comes through the Son? And so we see this Old Covenant, the understanding of the Old Covenant and, and how that it came through Moses and, and how the prophets delivered the different messages. And we talked about it uh, in the very beginning of this study, how that Jesus came and brought a consummated message from, from what the prophets had foretold and what the prophets had spoken about, how that Jesus con, uh, was, was the consummation of all their messages, how he took their fragmented messages and brought them all into one particular message. So so in this first verse, let's look at it verse by verse for just a moment. In this first verse, we, we see probably even a more vivid picture. If you go back to the original languages, you, you, you'll see even a more vivid picture than what's used here in this particular translation. There's two key words that I want to bring out to you tonight. Number one is prosecan, and the second word is perion. We, 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 we've taken proskin to mean uh, uh, to mean pay attention to or take heed, if you will. Take even the more earnest heed. And so the pay attention to is one of the most common meanings of this particular Greek word. Perion is a word uh, that has many meanings. It, it's used of something flowing or slipping past. It can be used of a ring that has slipped off the finger or a particle of food that slipped down the wrong way or a topic that may have slipped into a conversation of a point which has escaped someone in the course of an argument of some fact that is slipped out of the mind of, of something that has ebbed or leaked away. It's regularly used of something which has carelessly or thoughtlessly been allowed to become lost. And so he, he uses the two Greek words here. He says you need to take earnest heed, you need to really pay attention to what's going on, to the things which you have heard, lest you drift away, lest it gets away from you. Cling to these truths. Cling to these things that God is revealing to you through His Son, through His Word, through the incarnate Word made flesh. What God is revealing to you, take heed to these things so that they don't slip away. And so, so, so this is what the writer is trying to get us to understand. But, but if, you, if you look at these words and you research them a little bit deeper, they also have have a nautical tone to them. They, they have a nautical sense to them. The, the, the word prosecan, the word prosecan can mean to moor or to tie up a ship at dock. 
In, in, in the word perion can be used of a ship which has been carelessly allowed to slip past a harbor or a haven because the captain has forgotten to allow for the wind or the current or the tide. So this first verse could very easily and very vividly be tra- translated by the original language this way. Therefore, we must the more eagerly anchor our lives to the things which we have been taught in case the ship of life should drift past the harbor and we be wrecked. So you take earnest heed to the things that you've been taught. Don't let them get away from you. In, 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 in a more, more end-time kind of thinking, if you will, we, we're talking about in the last days that there's going to be a great falling away, that there will be a, an apostasy, if you will, a falling away from the faith. And so the writer of Hebrews here, he is, he is vividly warning them, listen, take heed to these things, cling to these things. Don't let them slip away from you. Don't allow the enemy of the world or, 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 or self or any of those things, don't allow this word to get away from you. It is the rock that you need to stand on. It is the thing that anchors your soul. It is the thing that's going to hold you. This word, this power of the word, the power of the spirit, the power of Jesus Christ in your life. It will anchor your soul so that all these things might be slipping and heading to a, a, an eternal doom. But if you'll cling to these words, there'll be life to you. And so you got to be very careful and continually on alert against the peril of drifting in life. And so, so, so there, the, the, we see all these things that are taking place. So for most of us, the threat of life is not so much that we should plunge into disaster, but that we should drift into sin. Now, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, you know, when, when, I think about, when I think about sin, I don't go out, wake up during the first of the day. I don't wake up with the attitude, well, let's see how I can break God's heart today. I, I don't. I don't. I don't wake up with the mindset of you know. Let me. Let me go. Let me just get up with the attitude of who can I chew out today, or who can I have a bad attitude about today, or or, or what bad words can I say today, or 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 who can I you know kill, or who can I who can I go fornicate with? I don't wake up with that mindset. And most people who fall into sin, if you will, they it, it's not an all of a sudden decision that's taking place that they're just falling into it, you know. Casting Crowns has a song that's called Slow Fade. And and if you've ever heard that song, it has so much truth to it. Because you just don't overnight, you know, a man who's in an adulterous affair didn't just one day decide, well, today I'm going to cheat on my wife. It was, a, it was a slow fade. It was a slow process. It was a, it was a drifting, if you will. And so the thing that keeps you from drifting is staying anchored and founded in the Word. you got to stay anchored to those truths. And this is what the writer said. He said, listen, give the more earnest heed to the things that we've heard. What's he talking about? He's talking about the Word that was heard that was passed on from Jesus to His disciples, to the apostles, the ones that have passed it down through history. Take heed to those things and cling to those things because this is the thing you got to understand, folks. Opinions can change and, and ways can change and and society can change, and all these things can change. But one thing remains consistent and constant, and that is the Word of God. If you will stay anchored to that Word, that Word will hold you, that Word will keep you, that Word will heal you, that Word will deliver you. There is power in the Word of God. He says, take heed to these things so that you do not drift away. So you got to cling to that Word. There, there are a few people who deliberately and in a moment turn their backs on God. It just doesn't happen that way. See, there are many who day by day, they drift further and further away from Him. And, you know, I've heard it as a pastor. I've heard people say, well, you know, all of a sudden, and this is to me, this is where it begins. This is just my opinion, okay? I'm not, I'm not telling you that I've got this from God or anywhere, but, but this is just my opinion. This is where I hear it begin. You, you go to somebody and you warn them and say, you need to be real careful about this. And they come back at you with, I really don't see anything wrong with this. And they say, when they, when they make the statement, I really don't see anything wrong with this. Well, they become comfortable with that. And then all of a sudden, the next thing happens and they don't really see anything wrong with that. And then the next thing, and then before you know it, they, they've justified their actions to the point because they don't feel anything's wrong with that. That, that. that they've gotten away from the eternal truths of the Word of God and the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that they have seared their conscience and they're out there in some far depth of sin and they're looking back saying, how in the world did I ever get here? And so this, this, this ebb and flow, if you will, this, 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 uh, this, this slow fade, if you will, that we drift further and further away from Him. There are not many, too, not many who in one moment of time 
commit some disastrous sin. There, there are many who almost imperceptibly involve themselves in some situation and suddenly awake to find that they have ruined their life for themselves and broken someone else's heart. It, it doesn't happen overnight. That's the point I'm trying to drive home. We must continually be on the alert against the peril of drifting in life. You have, to, you have to make sure that you stay anchored to Him. You have to make sure that you're staying consistently in Him. And, and this is the beauty of it, folks, is that He made the way. He is the way. He made the way and the opportunity that we can have the life in Him that, that all of us really want, all of us really desire. There's a hole inside of every one of us that only He can feel. And, and, and in that, he has, he has provided for us the source and opportunity to have life in Him and live in Him so that we can stay continued away from the from even the draw of the world. Let me tell you something. When, when, when there, there's a draw in my life. There's, there's things that are deep down inside my heart that, 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 you know, that, that I have to continually go to Him and, and He works on me and and I was sharing with someone today. I said, listen, I'm a work in progress. You know, my, my life at times seems like I'm a mess. And, and, but, but I just keep on going back to Him. And I keep leaning on Him and trusting in Him. And what I begin to see and what I begin to understand is, is that as long as I stay anchored to Him, as long as I stay connected to Him, it don't matter what the waters are that are drifting by on my left or on my right. It doesn't matter what society's throwing at me of going this way or that way. As long as I stay connected to Him, it doesn't matter what the enemy does or the world does or people say but by being in Him there is a freedom and a liberty and a power that helps me to overcome because greater is He that's in me than He that's in this world. Thank God that I abide in Him. So, so, so you, you, it, it's, 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 all, it's not an overnight thing. You know, I, I, I'll, use, I'll use drugs as an example. It, it begins, the door is open somewhere. And, and, and I've heard people say, you know, I, I don't do hard drugs. I just smoke a little bit of weed. You know, and, and then two years later, they're, 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 they're snorting cocaine and, and shooting up heroin and, and doing meth. And, and, and it all started somewhere. I, you know, I, I was sharing with someone not too long ago. They called me, and, or not called me, but pulled me to the side and was asking me about some situation that was going on in the family. And, and, and the first thing I said was, listen, you, you, you got to be very careful about what you open the door to. You got, you got to be very guarded about what you open the door to. Because when you open that door, it opens up the opportunity for the enemy to kick the door open. I, you know, I, I, I've said this many times, but, you know, if you give the enemy an inch, he'll become your ruler. You know, but, 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 but when you allow God through Jesus Christ, His Son, to, to anchor you and hold you and, and to help you through the troubled waters and the troubled times. Listen, i found that the enemy sometimes, he just wants to hit me with an onslaught. And then sometimes he sneaks up behind me and, and is trying to trip my feet out from under me. But i found that as long as I stay anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ, as long as I stay in the Word of God, as long as I stay on my knees in prayer, as long as I'm staying connected to the Lord God Almighty, i found that no matter what the storms are, no matter how much the wind blows I found that Jesus is a sure rock steadfast in him I am safe thank God for his power and his strength over the things of the world so 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 there are not many who who make these or commit these disastrous sins see we got to be continually on the alert against the peril of drifting in life and so the writer of Hebrews he characterizes under two headings the sins for which the law brings its punishment. No, number one, and, and let's go to verse two. He, he calls them transgression and disobedience. Transgression and disobedience. The first of these words is parabasis. It, it literally means the stepping across a line. When, when you commit a transgression, you just cross the line. You, 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 you've, gone, you've gone to a point that, that, that you've crossed the line. There, there's a line drawn by both, uh, by both the, uh, the knowledge and by conscience, and to step across it is sin. The Bible said, to him that knows do right and doesn't know it, it's sin. There, there, there's a line, and everybody knows uh, it, for your life, you know what that line is. It, you, you make that determination. I cannot do these things. If I do these things, then I am committing sin. You know, uh, I, I think about the Scriptures, you know, and, 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 and this is... <laughs> Uh, well, you can take this for what it's worth, but, but for some people that line might be here and some people that might be, line might be over there and some people that line might be over here. And you say, wait a minute, preacher, I, I don't believe that. Well, the Bible talks about to, 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 that, that if a man esteemeth the thing to be evil, to him it's evil. You know, uh, you know so, so for you and for your personal walk with God, God might say, I don't want you crossing this line. And, and you can say all day long, well, well brother Johnny, uh, God, Johnny Paul gets to cross that line over there. 
That's not fair. But, but see, see, God works it in you. It's God working it in you. And God's working it in you for your goodwill, for His good favor. He's, he's working in you. So God's saying to you, listen, this is not what I want you to do. This is the place. And, and, and if I, find it, I find it hilarious that, that, that God draws the line and so many people want to walk the line. You know, listen, I just want to go after Jesus. I, you know, I don't even think about the line. Matter of fact, I don't even look for the line. I, I'm just looking for Jesus. As long as I'm looking for Jesus, I'm not looking for how much I can get away with. I'm not looking how close I can get to the line. As long as I've got my eyes fixed on Him and I'm focused on Him, listen, I might go forward and I might fall backwards. And there might be hard days and there might be good days. But as long as i got my focus on Him and I'm going after Him, I'm telling you, i found an assurance. As long as I stay anchored and focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, i found power that I don't have to worry about the line. So, so, so he talks about transgression. Transgression is, is, is crossing the line by knowledge or by conscience or to step across into sin. The second word is parakoi. Parakoi be, begins by meaning imperfect hearing. So he says transgression and disobedience. Imperfect hearing is, is, is the literal transgression. So if, for instance, uh, of someone who is deaf, then it goes on to mean careless hearing. Careless hearing. The kind which through inattention either misunderstands or fails to catch what's been said. Careless hearing. And it finally ends with the unwillingness to hear. So, so, it, goes from, so it goes from imperfect hearing. So, so as someone who's just deaf, it goes from careless hearing. So, so it's, it's someone who just, who's not really paying attention. And then it's the unwillingness to hear. So it escalates where it becomes to the point that dis, there's disobedience to the very voice of God. It escalates to disobedience to the point that it's actually shutting the ears to the commands and warnings of the invitations of God. Scary stuff, folks. And he said, listen, this, this, this word, this, this deliverance of this command through the angels was steadfast. So every time they crossed the line, every time they refused to hear, they received their just reward. They were warned from the beginning. If you do this, this is what's going to happen. If you cross this line, this is what's going to happen to you. And listen, I, I read in the Scriptures, and there's some things I read in the Scriptures, and I go, man, God, that just wasn't fair. I, you know, I think about the man that was picking up sticks on the Sabbath day, and they took him out and stoned him. I'm thinking, what's the big deal? He was just picking up sticks. I mean, you know, I, what's the big deal that they take this man out and stone him? To, to me, I'm looking from this point of view. I'm saying it was just picking up sticks. God, why in the world would you have this man stoned? But it, see, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't actually the act of picking up sticks. It was the direct disobedience to the command of God. Don't do it. It don't matter how big or how small or how insignificant it might seem to us. But if God said don't do it, he means don't do it. And when they, when they disobeyed, when they just went beyond. And listen, he might have justified it in his mind. God, I understand. I really need these sticks for a fire. I really need it for this. And, and God, I understand. God's, God's, God's an understanding God. No, listen, when he lays down the law, especially in that time, he meant what he said. He meant what he said. And so they received their just reward. So, so the writer of the Hebrews ends this paragraph by stating three ways in which the Christian revelation is unique. And, and let's, let, let, let's look at this a little further. Number one, he, he said it is unique in its origin. This, this revelation that comes to us, and you can go to verse 3, that this revelation that comes to us, it first began to be spoken by the Lord. The origin of this great salvation comes from Jesus and Him alone. He is the originator of it. He is the author, the originator. He is the finisher, the perfecter of our faith. We, we, we look to Him as the author and the finisher of our faith. He, he originated it. He put the plan into order. And from that, he begins to perfect in us what is necessary in order for us to become what he has desired for us to become. And so the, uh, the origin of this message, it came directly from Jesus himself. It does not consist of guessing or feeling our way towards God. I don't have to stumble around in life. I don't have to guess if that's a pothole when I'm in the light. 
I don't have to wonder if, if, if this is a good thing or a bad thing when I'm walking in the light. <laughs> okay. I, I don't have to, there's no guessing about it. You know, when you're in the light, you can see everything clearly. You know, I, I can see, I can see some of you yawning, and I can see some of you, you know, rolling your eyes, and I can see some of you not paying, I can see some of that stuff because we're in the light. And so it, it's not a strange thing. You can tell me all day, oh, not me preaching, that wasn't me yawning. But listen, I seen you yawn, I seen your eyes rolling in the back of your head, and your head would have went back. I seen it. It's clear because we're in the light. When you're in the light, there's no discrepancy, there's no misjudgments. There, there's, no, there's no fumbling or bumbling about it. When you're in the light, and He is that light, there is absolutely no discretion whatsoever to, to, to veer left or right, but to stay straight and hold the course because as you walk in Him, and He is that light, and you are illuminated by that light, there is absolutely no disregard to what God is doing or what direction He has you to go as long as you abide in Him. He is the origin of this thing. He is the one that pulled it all together. It is the very voice of God Himself which comes to us in Jesus Christ. He's speaking to us. He's declaring it to us. It first began to be spoken by the Lord. Number two, it was unique in its origin. Number two, it was unique in its transmission. How it was transmitted to us. It was spoken to by the Lord, and it was confirmed to us by those who heard Him. Who heard Him. Listen, in, in, in law, in law, there is no more viable source in a, in, a, in a criminal situation than an eyewitness. Somebody that was there. Somebody that could give you the details. Somebody that could lay it all out. There's no more viable source than that. Paul would identify himself, Peter, James, and John would identify themselves as direct eyewitnesses to the things of Jesus Christ, what he did, what he said, and what he meant when he said them. And this was, this was the uniqueness of what was going on. It, was, it happened in the transmission. It came to the people to whom Hebrews was written from those who had themselves heard it directly from the lips of Jesus. That person who can pass on the Christian truth to others is, not, is the one who knows Christ other than it's second hand. It ain't second hand. I heard it from him myself. Man, that's, that's, that's good stuff right there. We can never teach what we do not know. You gotta get the information. You, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta allow God to, to permeate your soul with the information that He needs to give unto you. And listen, folks, there are truths in this word that there are a lot of people who have fallen far short of grasping the eternal truths of God. And the reasoning is, is because number one, they are either they are either uh, 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 just deaf to it, or number two, they are carelessly trying to fall into it, or number three, they are willfully turning away from that word of God. Let me tell you, when you dig in the word of God and you allow God to reveal himself through that word there is great power and great freedom and great liberty through that word that that word will say listen it is the transmission you can't take somebody to a place that you yourself have never been and you have got to get into the instruction book to find the direction that God would have us to go and in doing that you then can lead others to Christ God wants you to have that kind of relationship with him so it came to these people directly from the lips of Jesus so, so it's not second hand. So we can never teach what we do not know. And we can teach others of Christ only when we know Him ourselves. you got to know Him. And to know Him is to spend time with Him. That's the only way you're going to get to know Him. you got to, listen, I, I know my wife because for 20 years I've spent time with her. I, I know the Lord because I've spent time in prayer with Him. You know, you, you spend time in His Word. You spend, and listen, I promise you, today I spent some time alone with Him, and today I learned something I never learned before. I, 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 you know, you just keep learning and keep pressing, and He keeps revealing, and you keep shedding, and the more you shed, the more He reveals, the more you, the more you get, become less like you and more like Him, the more you die to yourself and come alive to Him. I'm telling you, the, the greater the revelation will take place in your life, and you'll find that this revelation is so grand. Why? Because it came directly from Him. So number one, its origin, the uniqueness of its origin. Number two, the uniqueness of the transmission. But number three, listen to this. It was unique in its effectiveness. 
Not only did it begin to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Look at verse 4. Verse 4 said, God bore witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. So it wasn't just that it originated. It wasn't that it was just talked about. God stepped in and said, I'm going to show you that what was said is truth. And I'm going to bear witness with it. And I'm going to confirm it. The Bible says that he will confirm his word with signs following. Signs following. Some of us want confirmation of the word with a sign. But God wants us to believe the confirmation of the word. And then from the belief of the confirmation of the word, we see the sign. We see the the bearing of witness. Listen, Jesus transmitted it. I mean, Jesus originated it. The the disciples and the apostles transmitted it. And God said, now I'm going to show confirmation to what it is that they're speaking. And I'm going to step in. And I'm going to work it with signs and wonders and miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it's all going to be according to my will. Because I'm fulfilling this. So, it produced signs and wonders and deeds of power of many kinds. Someone once congratulated the 19th century preacher, Thomas Chalmers, after one of, a, one of his great speeches. They said to him, they, they said, yes, he said, but, but, but what did it do to you? They're congratulating him. Oh, great speech, great, great sermon, great message. He said, yeah, but what did it do? What, what, what difference did it make? You know, words are just words. And listen, we could sit here today and start in Genesis and not leave the room till we hit the Revelation and, and read everything. But, but if there's no sign, if there's no wonder, what, what is his effectiveness? Listen, did, did God not say that I would send my word forth and it shall not return void, but it shall go forth and serve the purpose whereunto I send it? That, that's the word of God. God says, listen, if my word goes forth, it will have effect. The Word of God is sharper and powerful than any two-edged sword. Listen, when, it, when, it, when it's wielded, it cuts. It, it, it has an effect. It leaves a difference. The Bible said that He sent His Word and it healed them. It had an effect. There is power on the Word. It's not enough just to talk about the origination of it. It's not enough just to talk about the transmission and the preaching and the teaching of it. But it has to see. We want to see the confirmation of the Word of God with the effect of the Word of God that God confirmed it. That God confirmed it by bearing witness with signs, wonders, and miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something, friend. It is a sad, sad day that we live in that there's a whole lot of talk and a whole lot of preaching, but we're not seeing any miracles and signs and wonders. There are a lot of people that are blowing a lot of hot air from the pulpit and sometimes I feel like I'm doing it myself but I'm telling you, we, we've got to be able to see the sign and the wonder and the miracle of the effectiveness of the Word of God. If God is going to send forth this Word, it will do what He sent it to do. We're, we're not just sitting here just to buy time and say, well, we did it. One theologian, James Denny, used to say, the ultimate object of Christianity is to make bad people good. And the proof of real Christianity is the fact that it can change the lives of individuals. Let me say that again. Theologian James Denny said, The ultimate object of Christianity is to make bad people good. And the proof of real Christianity is the fact that it can change the lives of individuals. Listen, if this word, this book that we read called the Bible... If it did not have an effect with it, it's nothing more than a Shakespearean novel. But that word, when it is enacted, and that word, and when it is believed, when that word is put forth, and that word is doing, and it's in its purest sense, and it's doing everything it was intended to do, it will have effect. God will bear witness with it. We shouldn't be afraid. We shouldn't be afraid. I'm getting ready to close here. We should never be afraid to step into this world and dig in this word and take that word and use it for the glory of God. That word will have an effect. Listen, I'll be honest with you. You may not see it concretely, evidently at that moment right before your face, and then there are times you might see it happen right before your eyes. But I promise you, that there is an effect in that word that's spoken. Abraham, 
Abraham, the Bible declared that he spoke things that were not as if though they were. You know, Romans 4. We, we, we understand that. What was he speaking? He was speaking the word of God. I mean, he was just declaring what God had already said. God said you're going to have a son. God said you're going to be the father of many nations. He, they, they would go in the community and call themselves by names that, that meant absolutely, it was nonsense to everybody else. But all they were doing was walking on the promise of God. They were walking on the word of God. And listen, folks, it's the same thing for us today. We, listen, the, the greatest triumph that we can have is not actually seeing the miracle. It's having enough faith to believe for the miracle. Listen, it's nothing for me to, to, to get a check at the end of the week after a hard week's work. But when I don't know where anything's coming from, and I believe and I trust and know that God's going to make a way and provide for my need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus, when, when I can believe for that and then see God come through, the miracle took place when I got it in my thick skull that God was able to do what He said He would do. Then God said, okay, now that you can believe it, I can line up with that. There's power in believing the Word of God. It will change your life. It will change your life. And this is the thing, folks. This is something I've learned over the last three years. Don't read what you want to hear. Are you with me? Don't just read what you want to hear. Don't hit the highlights that make you feel comfortable. Dig in it. And when you dig in it, it'll change you. It'll change your thinking. It'll change your mindset. It'll change your heart. It'll change your outlook. It'll change everything about you when you dig in it. Don't, don't just go after the, the, you know, the, the, the bullet points that, that make you feel good to say, well, I, I looked at it and, and, and you know, it, it, it confirmed everything I believed is right. Dig in it. Let it change you. You know, I, you know what I found? A lot of stuff that I believe to be right over here, I kept digging and I got away from the bullet points and I started looking a little bit deeper. Because, and, and, and you know, I, I'm a firm believer that I, I believe in the whole Word of God, you know. And, and I got to digging a little bit deeper over here. I found out what I was holding to be true here in my own thinking really what had a greater, deeper meaning that, 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 that was far more significant than anything I was even holding to over here. And God was developing in me and, and, and pouring in me. And God's still doing that. And that's what I'm trying to get you to understand tonight. You cannot neglect this great salvation that God's given us is far beyond than a, Father, forgive me for I have sinned and I want you to come to my heart and be the Lord of my life. It's far deeper than a salvation about that. We, we've, we've, made it so much about, we've made it so much about confession, but that's just the beginning, folks. That's just the beginning of the relationship that God desires with you. That's just the beginning of what He wants to do in your life. You know, it, it, it's a great salvation. It's a powerful salvation what God wants to do. And he wants to take you so much deeper, so further. And he's saying, listen, get anchored to that. Get anchored to that. I promise you, there are political winds and, and, and social winds and all these winds that are blowing right now. And if you're not careful, if you're, if you're not anchored where you need to be, those things will blow you to and fro. They'll blow you to and fro. And, and what God is saying is, get anchored in me. Don't, don't, don't. Fall for, for the greatest whim and the, and, and the greatest fad that's going in Christianity right now. I don't care how they dress it up, folks. I read today, or yesterday, I read yesterday where Paul said, if even an angel come preaching another gospel, let him be accursed. You know, you, you, you got to get anchored, folks. You got to stand firm and, and, and hold fast and, and be persuaded. Don't back down. Don't back down from what the Word of God says. Don't let anybody delineate you from all those things. Stand true. The moral miracles of Christianity are still plain for all to see. God will confirm His Word. God will stand on His Word. God will not back down from His Word. And if He said He would do it, hang on to it. Don't let it go. Don't let a devil lie to you. Don't let an enemy push you around. Don't let a worldly system push you around. You stand firm in the Word of God. And don't neglect this great salvation, this power of the salvation of the Word of God that is completely liberated, set you free. Allow God to do in you what needs to be done so that you can experience the fullness of this salvation. Listen, folks, this, this, whew, I, I, I got to hurry here. But this, this relationship that God's wanting to have with you, uh, 20, uh, 42 years of, uh, of, of church and 22 years now of ministry, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at all this and I'm saying, man, God, whew, this, this absolutely flabbergasts me of the greatness of who you are. It is mind-boggling to me that when I begin to search you even deeper, 
how deep are you can even take me. It blows my mind when I begin to see. But yet, even in the depths of who God is, it's so simple. It's simple. We're looking for, we're looking for great theological answers, and God's saying, just take it at what I'm telling you. This is what I did. This is what I'm offering. Rest in it. Live in it. Abide in it. Look what I can do for you. Look what I've done for you. Just, just abide in me and watch me do a mighty work in your life. And that's what he wants from us, church. That's what he desires. And I want to tell you something. And, 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 and how many times have I said I'm closing? This is it right here. <laughs> I'm just <kidding. laughs> This is the thing. If, if you will search God out. I, 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 put out a, I put out a verse this morning in, in Jeremiah. It says, when you seek for me with all your heart, you'll find me. See, and, and I put, I, this is what I tagged with it. I said, you know, it's not enough just to pray. He also asks us to seek his face. And, and, and there are people that, that they, they just pray. But God says, when you seek me, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. And you know what he's doing? Psalm 53, I believe it says, that God is looking down upon us to see if there are any that do understand, that do seek after him. God's looking for people that are seeking after him. You, you say you're on a quest, God's on a quest. He's after you. Harder than you're after him. And he's saying, come on. Come on, keep coming. I'm coming. Come on. Come on, I got so, so much greater for you. I got so much to offer you. Come on. Keep on searching. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. Keep on asking. See if I'll not do what I said I would do. Wow, what a relationship he desires for us to have. What a powerful relationship God wants us to have with him. And, 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 and this is the point. Get it deep down in your heart. Get it deep down in your soul. And you say, preacher, I don't know if I'm convinced of it. Dig in that word until he just brings it to life to you. Dig in that word. Search out those scriptures. See what he says and prove him to be true. God said, prove me now here with us. See if I'm able to do what I said I'd do. Prove him. Put the word to work. See if God will do it. Amen. Man, God's so good. It's a great salvation. Amen. Amen. Would, 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 you, would you let's pray for just a moment. Let's, listen, listen. My, my, my desire, my hope, my prayer is, is that as we study and, and search these scriptures out, as we begin to look at these things that God's saying to us, I, my, my, my prayer is that, that it would get so rooted in our heart that no matter what, anything comes our way, that, it, that, that we, we've got a firm foundation. And then from there, we'll see the greatness of what God is and, and, and see what God wants to do in our life. And that's the place we need to go, folks. That's what the world needs to see. The world, the world doesn't need to see some of the stuff that we're trying to show them. The world just needs to see Jesus. I mean, I, I, that's the bottom line, folks. You know, I, you know, I, I, show, I shared with you Sunday, I said, you know, we, in the Pentecostal realm, we spent so much time talking about tongues and the Holy Ghost, and, and I am by no means demeaning his office and what he does. He, but even the Bible declared that he came to testify of Jesus. He came to testify of Jesus. So, so, so as, a, as a body of believers, as an individual, can, can, can we just go ahead tonight and say, Lord, more than anything in my life, I want to let your light shine through me. God, I want, to, I want to be a beacon of hope to a world that's lost and dying, whether it's my inner circle, my, my, my circle of friends, whether it's my people on my job or at my home, in my neighborhood. God, wherever, I want to be an effective light for your kingdom purposes. So that I can see this great salvation. Can, can, we, can we just spend a moment in prayer, just in a closing prayer here, and just ask God to help us. Help us to be an illumination of his power and his glory. Father, in the name of Jesus. We started this, we started this service with, with a song of, 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 of dealing with the sin and that you've dealt with the sin and the sin's been washed and, 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 and you're not even looking at our sin anymore. You're just, you're just declaring unto us, come on. Come on, let's, let's, let's go deeper. Let's, 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 see, let's see the power of the gospel and, and not be ashamed of it. Let's, let's see the declaration of the, of the gospel in the Word of God. God, you, 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 you declared in this Word that we should be anchored and founded in that Word. God, I, I pray 
that this coming year that there be a greater desire to search out the depths of you, God, to search out the deep riches of your word and the eternal truths, God, that you've spoken over us, God, and that we, we not read just to be reading, but, God, that we would search with you, for you, God, with all our heart. God, I pray that you would do something deep inside of us. God, that there would be a change in our heart and our mind and our thinking. God, that we would begin to, that we would begin to see what's been done. That we would begin to see, God, and it, it is finished. <laughs> it's done. And God, that we would just begin to walk in the freedom of that and the liberty of that. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I praise you for that, God. And Father, we surrender this to you tonight. We're believing and trusting for your will to be done in this. And we know, God, that you're able. We bless your name tonight. We bless your name tonight, Jesus. Help us to make much of you. Help us to make much of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I want to be like David. I want to hide your word in my heart, God, that I might not sin against you. But, God, I don't want to hide my word in my heart just so that I'm protected from sin. But, God, I want that word in my heart, God, that it'll change me. God, that it'll do a wondrous work in my life. Lord, I want that word to be the God and light of my heart, my mind, and my thinking, my thoughts, everything about me, God. Allow it to be the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path, Jesus. God, shine through me for your kingdom's sake, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, that it can have an effect, that word can have an effect on those that we come in contact with. God, make the difference in our lives, God, because you are the main one that can do that for us. And we surrender it all to you, Jesus. Dig in our hearts, God, and plant yourself firmly. God, let growth come from that, I pray in the name of Jesus. We bless you tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. I love you, folks. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Take some time, fellowship, love on one another. Y'all have a great night.